sponsored by a few. Say I'm a no. Hey, it, can you post me on TikTok? <laughs> Stupid, dumb, doc. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Lil Mar is a self-proclaimed rapper and TikToker, and notorious for a lot of things. Let's start off with probably the most disgusting one. Lil Mar bought a McChicken sandwich and had intercourse with it. He then filmed himself eating it. I warn you, this is pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend against looking the video up. I even had to cut some parts out. He also made TikToks of him driving at very high speeds on the highway and endangering everyone else. The next disturbing bit would be his short-lived relationship with a homeless woman. He offered her a place to live in exchange for intercourse with him. He also made this post here saying, she's asleep, I should push her onto the highway. I don't know where else to leave her at. I feel like vomiting. It was that bad. After he got what he wanted, Lil Ma dropped her off at an abandoned house and immediately fled with his car and joked about it. You can just wait here, I'll go get it. Not really. Drive, Mark, drive. Drive, drive, drive. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> She really thought she was gonna be able to live with me. Stupid, dumb, dot. <laughs> Got my whole mother car smelling like goddamn fish. No cat, bro. This sh ridiculous, bro. That was the worst ever. After this, he'd make a post saying, Now for real though, I do feel bad for her because she's homeless. And I basically left her stranded in a whole nother state without a phone. But at the end of the day, my body count is 31. And that's all that matters, right? Abandoning the homeless girl. Most of y'all know about this. It went kind of viral. Uh, basically, I picked up the girl in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is an hour away, hour and a half away from Columbia, South Carolina. And I had sex with her. I told her that I had a place for her to live because she was homeless. And I really didn't think it through, honestly, because um, I didn't know, like, I didn't have, like, a plan, really. I just decided to take her and leave her at this house, which was a little bit up i'll admit but the, the thing is the house that i left her at it wasn't actually like an abandoned it was an abandoned house but it wasn't in the middle of nowhere like it was literally in the same neighborhood that my friend huff lives in and i live four minutes away from huff so um while all of this has been pretty disgusting nasty and unhinged the next part is where it becomes really disturbing lil mar and one other man assaulted a girl aged between 11 to 14 years old in a parking lot of a walmart he was sentenced to six years in prison. Unfortunately, he only had to serve four months. After he got out, he immediately used the attention that he got and turned the entire thing into a meme. Among many tweets, he also made stories, reading, Just realize, I only have one more day to legally F as many 14 to 15 year olds as I can. Or, I really wish it was easier to outwork girls without getting caught. And so on. These are attempts to trigger people and get attention, but his TikTok is still only sitting at 16k followers, and his IG at almost 50k, so it didn't work out that well. But it's actually crazy that he never got banned on all of these platforms for saying and doing the most vile stuff imaginable, while other people get banned, demonetized and age-restricted for just covering stuff in an extremely censored way. Anyway, there were a few more things that happened with Lil Mar, but it's mostly just silly stuff, like him getting a very bad face tattoo and then starting a GoFundMe to get it removed, which completely failed, or him paying a hooker 60 bucks to lose his virginity and so on. Body count, 63. I ain't gonna lie, that shit was mid. That shit was not worth it. Not $160, hell no, and then 80 to record? But um, she also made me turn off the lights, so my uh, hidden camera right there was kind of pointless. <laughs> Before we continue, let's talk about today's sponsor, Fume. A fume is a little air device made to break your bad habits. The best way to replace a bad habit is with a good habit. Fume is not a vape. It's not even electronic. It doesn't contain any parts with potentially harmful chemicals. Instead, it has plant-based cores that are infused with natural flavors to create flavored air. The flavored air category is becoming the leading alternative to vaping or smoking. They have multiple flavors to choose from like crisp mint or orange vanilla. It's not addictive. It doesn't contain any nicotine. We all have some bad habits that we should work on, and it may be difficult to quit cold turkey for a lot of those, 
so why not consider an alternative? It's like someone trying to quit caffeine. It might be smart to start with decaf coffee instead of just quitting cold turkey. There are thousands of 5-star reviews from more than 150,000 customers who have used Fume to change their lives and get rid of bad habits. For a limited time, use my code Eudoxia to get 10% off a journey pack. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code Eudoxia, or scan the QR code on screen to save 10% off your order today. This is definitely one of the most disturbing cases I've ever come across and was widely shared on Chinese social media sites like TikTok and Bilibili. Beanbag Adventures was a Chinese TikTok urban explorer who would often visit multiple disturbing and isolated places and post videos about them online. Back in 2022, he visited what seemed to be an old laboratory that had been abandoned for a while. As he entered the place, he sensed a strong, unpleasant smell emanating from the building, and despite wearing a mask to block it, the smell was still too strong. However, Bean followed the smell, wondering what its cause might be. As he roamed around the building, he entered a room with what appeared to be a pool. Bean was certain that the source of the smell was this room, so he went ahead to take a look at what was inside the pool. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I can show this, but you had a pool filled with dead babies. Initially, everyone including Bean thought that these were just movie props. However, some were concerned because of the way those bodies were lying there. The dead bodies were relatively young, perhaps only a month or two old. Also keep in mind the very foul smell, which almost made Bean puke. It could be decomposing corpses. Bean would carry on with his work posting videos about several other places and mysteries. However, he, along with several others, was left wondering what exactly was happening in that abandoned cell, and this prompted Bean to once again visit the laboratory on December 26, 2022. Upon entering the second time, Bean noticed several new things. There were strange tubes, bottles, and bones of little children lying on the ground. It was certain now that these definitely weren't for a movie shooting. On the ground, there were bloodstains, and children's cloth were littered on the ground. The pool was mostly covered with a cloth, hiding its content. However, an opening allowed Bean to look inside, only to find those decaying dead bodies lying there, exposing the bones of the babies outside. And these TikToks were mostly re-uploaded to YouTube, but they have mostly been removed, so it's difficult to still find this footage. Initially, people on TikTok weren't convinced and doubted Bean. However, the bodies seemed just too real to be fake, sparking a debate on social media on what exactly was happening in the abandoned underground laboratory. It's worth noting that some of the clothing and the bloodstains weren't there when Bean first visited the lab, implying that whatever was happening at that place was still ongoing. It didn't end here, as Bean would make a third visit, exposing even more details about the strange place. Upon his third visit, Bean would discover skulls, tubes with fetuses, and large bags filled with skeletal remains. But this time, the bones seemed to be not just those of children, but rather of full-grown adults. People began speculating what could be happening behind closed doors of that underground lab. Some speculated that it could be the works of a serial killer, but nobody knew for certain. On January 15, the Beanpack Adventure account suddenly stopped posting, only to return after a few days, with all four videos about the lab being deleted. Bean went on to make multiple videos about many more different places, but never spoke about the lab ever again. Some speculated it to be a black market for organ trade and harvesting, because even though China has the least number of organ donors, it is still relatively easy to get an organ transplant in the country, especially if you're rich, leading people to believe that it was actually the Chinese government kidnapping children for this exact reason. Others believe it was a lab for human experiments, but it was then later on abandoned. To this date, we have no definitive answer to this mystery. If you're enjoying the video so far, please make sure to subscribe. This was a fairly unknown TikToker, but since he got exposed, he received quite a lot of attention. Brandon He Berlin, going by its lit Brandon on TikTok, is a 21-year-old from Kentucky. Most of his TikToks are just weird, and he overall seems to be a weirdo, but nothing was looking too suspicious, until he admitted in a live stream that he kissed a 9-year-old. 
He'd then pretend to talk to someone in his room, basically reaffirming that he really kissed her and saying that he doesn't even really care. The one that kisses nine year olds, right? Oh, yeah, 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 I've heard about him. Um, yeah, what's, what's up with him? I mean, he's like low key weird, you know? Uh, who, who would do such a thing? Exactly, bro, who would do such a thing? Loki, I don't care. He would later claim that he's now quote unquote clean and wouldn't do it again. Stupid things that uh, A, I'd probably be arrested for, and B, I probably deserve what is being uh, told to me and stuff. But um, I'm just here to let you know that ever since what happened back in 2020, I have kept myself clean. You can even hear him admit that he should have been arrested for what he did. Ironically, on the 21st of July 2022, Brandon was arrested for SA and unlawful imprisonment charges, but he was let out on bail. Now, this is actually on a different charge of a different victim being assaulted, so he definitely didn't get clean as he claimed earlier. He even contacted her in order to convince her to drop the criminal investigations into the incident. After all the backlash, he initially blocked all of the comment sections in order to silence people calling him out. After he realized that it only made matters worse for him, he instead made one final statement, demanding that people should just forgive him and move on, since other creators were also forgiven for their mistakes and they got away with it. Y'all need to shut the f up, let it go, it was years ago. People have forgiven all these other creators, but yet you can't to me when it's been two, four years ago. Uh, I expect you respect me the same way you respect them and honestly i don't fucking care anymore but from now on i'm gonna stay public i'm gonna keep posting i'm gonna turn my comments on not have any filters y'all can say the amount that you want to all in all you need to shut the up let it go literally thousands of other creators that have been exposed for the same thing has been forgiven i hardly see any more comments on their pages explaining what happened to uh, their allegations he's ranting about how other people did so many bad things which he thinks makes what he did less bad i think that's the logic he's trying to go for he made some comeback attempts but i couldn't find any other account of his Brittany Johnson, also known by her online alias Lovely Peaches, was pretty popular on Snapchat and TikTok. Back in 2020, she was gaining a lot of attention on social media because of her songs and more than disgusting videos. According to herself, she was abusing her own child, Cora Miracle. Okay, so Cora Miracle, she's two years old, she's my daughter. When I gave birth to Cora Miracle, I automatically knew that she was a piece of sh She's worthless, she's ugly, her head is huge. Like, the just, ugh, okay? I already knew I hated the but I never really did anything about it. But when she was four, when she was a few days old, I remember I used to pinch her skin, I ain't gonna lie. I used to pinch her skin just to make her cry and bite her and bite her skin and pinch it. Okay, like I said, when she was a few days old, I used to bite her skin, pinch her skin just to make her cry. But I never really did nothing too irrational. She also had videos of herself indulging in her own feces, which I won't be showing here. I'm also unsure if that's even real or not. She further said that she wanted to have all STDs. And he also had this. Cora became her main source of infamy. She'd draw up all kinds of lies just to have people engage with her accounts. She'd tell stories about how she once succeeded in selling Cora off to sex traffickers and that she sees her child as property. I decided I wanted to get rid of her for good. But what I meant by that is that I wanted to sell her into sex trafficking to get her out of my hair. I started meeting up with pimps. I had people that would buy her for a certain amount of time. I was trying to sell her, but we was trying to get to a certain price and making sure that I get paid off because that's my f property. So I want to make sure that I got paid off at least enough money for you to keep her for good. Like probably on her birthday she was going to be sold, but unfortunately she didn't make it that far. There even was a video which went on for minutes on end where she talked about how she took the life of Cora. I used to pour bleach on her but not that much because like I said you ain't trying to get arrested you know you ain't trying to have all these marks on your child's body but I was at one point I was going to kill her intentionally 
because I didn't kill her intentionally. But I was going to kill her intentionally, but I didn't know that I could make a lot of money off of her. So eventually, since I wasn't going to kill her, my punishments got a little rough. I would put her in hot scalding water, throw Clorox, throw Clorox on her. I would pinch her really hard, harder than I used to because I used to just pinch like... This even hurts me, so I can only imagine. <laughs> but my punishments got pretty bad to the point where I was putting her in high school and water and basically just torturing her, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed watching her get a lot of times. I would actually smile, and she would get and I could see the pain in her eyes. She would look at me with so much pain and fear in her eyes, and all I would do is just smile. I was like... This was a blatant lie. She couldn't even keep a straight face while lying. It was later, in 2021, that the Children's Riot reported that Brittany had lost custody of Cora and was now under trial for another crime. Her violence was not limited to just her daughter, but extended to her dog too. She claimed to have broken both of the legs of her dog and was arrested for it, at least according to Business Insider. You had videos on Instagram where she'd pick up her dog and spray perfume on his face as well. Either way, she has never been sentenced and she is still active on social media to this date. Paul Reach, going by Beauty Beyond the Eye or Snapshot Eye on TikTok, is an old dude in his 40s, dressing like a teenager and doing cringy TikTok dances and challenges for over 900,000 followers. Fine. I'll do it myself. This alone, though, wouldn't warrant a coverage in this format, so what's so disturbing about Paul? Well, there are allegations against him that he impregnated a 16-year-old when he was 27, though the controversy started off rather slowly. Paul was caught on numerous occasions liking posts of underage girls. The girl in question was around 16 years old. In a live stream, Paul admitted to liking them and claimed that he only liked those pigs because she beat cancer. The ladies' pictures that I've liked, like I said this morning, like I said this morning, she suffered with cancer when she was growing up. So I will like her prom pictures because she survived to be a prom. I will like the other pictures because she was confident at posting even though she's recovered and was recovering from cancer. After this, someone that went by Boo as a maniac posted a video that was cross-posted on Facebook claiming that Paul was contacting a 15-year-old. I said I was taking a break last night and I was going to and then I got this message and it knocked me fucking sick. Um, essentially, a minor has contacted me to let me know that Paul was messaging them because they were sick and this is the second time we have seen him do something similar. Allegedly, he was also messaging a girl who had cancer and liking their photos. Obviously, I have made the screenshots so you cannot tell who they are because they are a minor. Pause to read. In the clip, she shows a few screenshots. This one reads, Hi Boo, referring to the TikToker here. I've seen your TikToks on Paul, and I just want to say that Paul messaged me in around March of this year. I'm 15 years old. I was 15 at the time he messaged me too. I have proof of the messages if you'd like to see them. I don't know, I thought maybe texting you and giving you some more information like this, you could add to any TikToks you're making about Paul in the future. Paul messaged me in regards to my first pinned post on my Instagram, revolving my ovarian disease, acting as though he was a safe place for me to reside. I think it's fairly obvious I'm underage. In the post, which he had clearly read, I state I've missed out on school, so I think that definitely gives Paul more proof of me being a teenager. Legit, you can tell she's a child in the post because she mentions school. Pause to read. She would then send in the proof, this time a direct message through Instagram from Paul. And here he texts a girl saying, Hi, I really hope you are okay. I read your health update post and I'm sorry for all that you've been going through, which seems to be for a while. Please surround yourself with those that genuinely care about you and leave those that talk about you far away. The obvious issue at hand is that this is merely a trick to target vulnerable teenagers by showing support so they give you trust. Eventually, you abuse that trust to groom that person. This is a common trick that has been used many times by many different predators. So far, however, there is no concrete proof that this was Paul's intention, so we have to delve a bit deeper. To have a better idea of who Paul really is, we should look into what he was actually doing before TikTok. Paul Breach used to be a care worker and was very affectionate with his patients by kissing and hugging them. Oh, did I kiss my patients? I gave my patients a side kiss like that, on the forehead and f***ing well every single time, every damn time. 
Keep in mind that some of those people cannot even really consent to anything, and they are obviously vulnerable. When I go back to care, down the line, months, years down the line, I will hold a resident's hand, I will hug a resident, and depending on the resident and what they're seeing, I will side kiss. I will do that because that's my level of care that I've done for 21 years. It's appropriate levels of care. <laughs> I just, I don't know. That's... We now get to the most crucial aspect of his past, his relationship with a 16 to 17 year old, which turned into a pregnancy. He was around 26 to 27 years old at the time. Someone posted this screenshot, stating the following. There's been a lot of rumors going around about an underage girl who got pregnant. Her birthday is in November 1990. These photos are from April 2008. She would have been 17 and 4 month-ish here, with a visible bump. I don't know how long they were together prior to her pregnancy. Paul added multiple pictures, showing the bump and captions like, Hi there hottie, and oh, baby dump. The user would share more of his Facebook posts, saying that he madly fell in love with this girl and that she makes him happy. If we look at the date here, this was in September of 2007, meaning she was 16 years old and he was 26. Keep in mind that their relationship could have started way earlier as well. They look very comfortable together in those images and she got pregnant when she was 17. Normally, relationships take a few years to get to that stage, so it's possible that the relationship started before she was 16. After being confronted in his DMs about it, he just said that they were in love and bought a house and that they spent years together, obviously not denying anything. However, if the relationship really started when she was 16, then it would be legal, because according to my research, he is from Nebraska. The age of consent is 16 there. It goes without saying that regardless of legality, impregnating a 17 year old when you are 27 is beyond morally questionable. He was getting quite a bit of backlash online, but also offline. There were multiple public interactions captured by people and men. Are they uncomfortable? With beauty beyond the eye. There's a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say I'm a. Enjoy yourselves. Right, you ready? Yo, are you? No problem. Yo, right. what? So, so I'm near you. <laughs> Face. Well, what are you saying? Oh, there you go, you, can you post me on TikTok? No, no, no. Ah. Uh... There were a few more things that happened with Paul Breach, but for the most part, there doesn't seem to be any legal activity, and he continues having his TikTok account, which is bigger than ever, and seems to have gotten away with basically everything. The following case is about the Korean TikToker Sho Won Jeon, more commonly known as Mama Guy. He was an absolutely massive TikToker, amassing over 50 million followers. He used to upload trending TikTok challenges and dance videos up until July 2023. Suddenly, he completely vanished from social media. The reason for his absence was because of his horrible crimes behind the scenes. After two months of him not posting anything, the Seoul Broadcasting System revealed that a TikTok influencer was arrested on the charge of SA. Although the identity of the perpetrator wasn't revealed, it was clear from a blurred out recording that this indeed was a TikToker in question. According to SBS, the victim came forward and gave a detailed account of what transpired. Wang Zhou and his male friend had taken the victim to a bar for a night out drinking. When the victim couldn't take any more alcohol, Wang Zhou and his friend forced her to drink more. They kept forcing her to drink until she lost consciousness. Wang Zhou and his friend carried the girl out on the pretense of being her friend and put her in their car. They drove to her house and took her inside. They then proceeded to take turns abusing her until she woke up and realized what was going on. The victim also reported that she had heard the two males talking about recording the whole thing and keeping it for blackmail or other purposes. Later, when the official police investigation started and law enforcers arrived at Wang Zhou's house, he refused to open the door for them. At that point, the fire department had to be called in to break into the house and subdue him for questioning. Wang Zhou and his male friend are currently being held on trial for SA and have proven guilty. One could face up to seven years in prison. Sunny Khan was a Pakistani-American TikToker who had over 20,000 followers and was slowly building her platform. Her videos were about her life as an art and psychology major and the struggles of a foreigner living in the West. However, the TikToks were mainly about her going through a divorce. She was married to Rahil Ahmed, who was reported to be a very mentally unstable man. 
He'd often threaten his wife that he would take his own life if things didn't go his way. In December of 2021, Sania filed for divorce and Ahmed moved away to Georgia while she stayed in Chicago. After Ahmed saw her videos about their divorce and her struggles, he went back to Chicago. When Ahmed's family members couldn't find him for a day, they reported him missing to the Alpharetta police, who started with a welfare check. The results of the investigations were shocking. In Sania's Chicago residence, she was found dead with a bullet wound on the back of her head. Looking around, the police found the perpetrator to be Rahil Ahmed, who was lying on the floor deceased, as well with a gun and a note in his hand. He decided to take her life and consequently ended himself. Security cameras captured Rahil in the elevator on his way to Sania. These were the final moments captured on tape. Make sure to check out Fume using my link down below. If you've missed a previous episode, click here to see it.